podcast and I want to talk about something today that I haven't talked about in a little while, but that doesn't mean I haven't been thinking about it. So some of you all know that back in 2019 from, well, from 2019 to 2021, I was working for a pet care company, a really large company that had multiple factories throughout the U.S and well really throughout the world <laughs> but um i would particularly help with recruitment across some factories in particular for forklift operators and so ever since that experience interviewing forklift operators and understanding how factories work and how the conversations within that company were really geared towards digital factories Automation has always been on the top of my mind because I've always thought about, okay, so many people work in warehouses. So if we're making digital warehouses and factories, what does that mean for us? Like, you know, folks that would work in a warehouse. Now, when I say us, I'm not talking about me. If you don't know me, you know, I'm a girly girl, so I may not cut it in a warehouse or driving a forklift, but it has drove that thinking for me. So we've had a couple of different conversations about automation and I honestly see forklift operator jobs being gone over the course of the next maybe five to 10 years. And I'm going to tell you why <laughs> I'm going to tell you why don't panic. And I am also going to talk about some other jobs that would be an alternative to forklift operator jobs, production operator jobs, really a lot of warehouse jobs at this point. We know that there are self-driving vehicles, there's a craze for self-driving cars, but no one's been really talking about self-driving forklifts. Or you could also um, see them as, what are they calling it here? Autonomous forklifts, right? I'm looking at a couple of different articles. One is Freethink, and they're titling their article, The Age of Autonomous Forklift is Here. There's also another article that talks about firms developing self-driving forklifts to ease Japan's labor shortages. Now, what sparked me to dig in a little bit and find these articles was I, I was just thinking about, you know, the automation and whatnot. And I decided to type into Google like self-driving forklifts. And the first thing that actually popped up was about Toyota and there was a video from Toyota where they're showing these self-driving forklifts and basically they can do all these things without needing to be shut down. Like they don't need to take a break every couple of hours. They're not going to show up late to work. You know, in the video I posted, oh my gosh, like two years ago at this point, I was talking about interviewing and how important it was for us to really ask about attendance because oftentimes if we don't have a forklift operator show up, well, everyone can't just hop on a forklift, right? So there's safety concerns, there's concerns with people showing up, and particularly in Japan, they have a major issue going on there. They have an aging workforce, they don't have a lot of immigration happening there, so who's going to do the work within their warehouses, and particularly Toyota? And we know the demand for Toyotas are strong, right? I see the Toyota Camrys and Corollas rolling all throughout this country. We know Toyotas are really well-made cars. So I doubt the demand for Toyota is going to slow down necessarily. So this is, you know, just something to consider, right? That if you are in a forklift operator role or a production operator role, machine operator, whatever your role is, if you're working in the warehouse, I feel like more people need to think of five to 10 years out, what their role is going to look like. Now, does this mean, am I saying every single warehouse job is going to be a robot? Probably eventually, will that happen in the next 10 years? Maybe not. However, the makeup of the factory is definitely going to be more digitalized. And so I want to talk about this particular article. Let me see if I can find it again. Self-driving lifters are solving labor shortages and could help avoid some 35,000 workplace injuries. 
If you're looking for driverless vehicles at work, you may have better luck inside a warehouse than on the street. While Silicon Valley's vision of zipping around city streets hands-free runs is slow to be realized, an, an automized forklift may soon be helping things get out the warehouse door into yours. So <laughs> someone is quoted here that autonomous forklifts are already being deployed in warehouses. There's one brand, Auto, O-T-T-O, Autonomous Forklift joins big names like DHL, they hire a ton of people, and Toyota in hoping that the robotic lifters will not only increase speed and efficiency amidst severe labor shortage, but also improve safety as well. And if you watched my original video where I'm talking about, hey, here's some things that you should be ready to talk about during your interview for a forklift operator job, I talked about safety. That is number one concern for most large companies that have multiple warehouses throughout the world or throughout, you know, a country. They're saying that forklifts account for 10% of injuries where they are in use, causing nearly 35,000 injuries a year just in the U.S. So do you really think that companies are not going to eventually shift to using the automated forklifts if they can save on injuries happening, they're safe, and they're reliable, <laughs> unless they were to break down. They don't have to worry about people not showing up and the delays and all the issues that are caused when someone maybe gets sick or if they just don't show up on time or they can't work or you have a situation like Japan where they're just having difficulty finding workers because they're aging workforce. Now, I do have to address the statistics here are not extreme. By 2025, more than 2.5% of all industrial trucks will be automated forklifts. However, everything starts at a small percentage. Once there's more and more adoption, once companies are able to see that this is successful, you're going to have more adoption of it, meaning more automated forklifts and other machinery and less forklift operators that are human uh, and other operators and machinists that are going to be in the factory. So they deployed these in the fall of 2021. The forklifts can be toggled between self-driving and manual operation. That's crazy. They can work every day, all day, and are able to reach items up to 27 feet up and two pallet feet, says the company um, telling Daily News. They credit the autonomous forklifts for a 20% increase in efficiency. And efficiency is always the reason why companies will invest more into robotics because they're gonna save cost overall and have a greater output, which translates to better profits, right, in the end. And so <laughs> this is not to like scare anyone, but it is information to help you if you are in this type of role, or you've been working in the warehouse for a long time, to start thinking about some other type of jobs that may you may be able to just shift to like being a mechanic for a forklift like this that is self-driving because of course these are going to break down or engineering field you're part of the process of actually uh you're part of the process of building these machines right or another big thing that has been talked about is the digitalization of warehouses so that there can be real-time data sent back to corporate so the executive teams know exactly what's going on in a warehouse or factory right so you may want to you know focus on data so there's another company it's a construction firm called shimizu they're in japan and their biggest customer is of course toyota now, there's a couple of different Japanese companies that are developing these self-driving forklifts. However, Shimizu, sorry if I'm mispronouncing that, 
but they have artificial intelligence that analyzes images from an onboard camera to accurately detect the location of pallets and other objects. AI can adjust the forklift's course even if the items are not at their designated locations. Shimizu aims to commercialize autonomous vehicles by the middle of this year. Japan's biggest forklift maker, Toyota, is developing a vehicle that uses so-called deep learning, machine learning, right? This technology enables AI, artificial intelligence, to learn from experience and improve its performance over time. So these machines, not only are they already going to be, you know, very efficient for companies, but they're going to get better and better over time because they're able to do this deep learning, right, as a part of artificial intelligence. Kind of scary to think about, but also exciting to think about because, you know, warehouse jobs are very manual intensive. So on the bright side of things, I do feel like that's great that people can focus on jobs that are more creative or innovative and thinking of ideas and such. However, however, this does mean that a lot of people will have to transition into other types of jobs if these do grow and more companies will look at Japan and Toyota um, and see them being more and more efficient by using these machines. Now there is an entry cost. I think each, well, what I saw quoted for each machine, it's about $50,000. Whereas I, I've seen for forklifts, you know, anywhere from 20,000 to up to 50,000. 50,000 would be on the high end, right? So uh, it will be a cost. So companies would have to really see how much other companies are profiting from these autonomous forklifts, right? These self-driving forklifts. But I think the key thing there is the deep learning and also the fact that they have these, you know, these sensors, they can be more safe in the warehouse and what I'm not seeing in these articles, but I suspect is also a part of this technology is that there is real time data likely being sent back to the corporate offices to really share what is going on. Otherwise, how would they know how efficient things are uh, in the factory? I imagine they're gonna have real time data that is really beneficial, especially with you know, thinking about Amazon and other similar uh, e-commerce sites throughout the world where people are buying instantly. <laughs> they were just buying instantly. There's a lot of demand. Folks are no longer really going to stores in certain instances, like when it gets colder, during a pandemic situation. And so a lot more companies are likely thinking about you know, what customers are actually doing. So if they can know what exactly is going on in their warehouses in terms of inventory stock, how quickly we can get things off of pallets and onto shelves or off of, share, or off of shelves, well, that's gonna provide more of a um, better customer experience because we're gonna be able to hopefully get items more quickly and hopefully also get items that are damage free as well. So just a lot of thoughts that I have about this. Let me know what you think. As I titled the video, I think forklift operator jobs and a lot of warehouse jobs for humans are pretty much over. I'm just seeing the writings on the wall. I'm seeing automation as something that every major company is investing into. And so I would just want people to prepare. Now, a quick thing, if you're looking for different jobs within this space that may not be taken by, over by robots, I would just look into digital factory type of jobs. If you search Indeed or LinkedIn, you'll see a lot of different uh, jobs that will help companies transition to these digital factories like implementation managers and you know you're going to have your also your engineers who are building these machines your folks that are very analytical minded and are building uh, reports and data systems you'll also have your artificial intelligence folks so more tech focused where they are able to really hone into the machine learning and the deep thinking that 
companies are wanting to have uh, in these machines, right? So a lot of different areas of work may come from this. However, your day-to-day -day warehouse jobs, warehouse associates, production operators, forklift operators, it, it's looking bleak. It's not going to happen immediately, of course, but again, I do see that being a thing over the course of the next five to 10 years. And another thing to think about is just the fact that it, companies have had a period where it was just very tough for them to get labor. So I've said this before in other videos, if companies are having a hard time getting labor, well, other companies are figuring out a way to solve that issue. And likely it is going to machines and figuring out a way for them to do, if not everything, but do a lot of what the people in those warehouses or in those shops were doing before. So let me know what you think about the video. Let me know if you hate what I'm talking about or disagree with me. These are just my thoughts coming as a recruiter that has worked at a large uh, company that had multiple factories and was talking about this in 2019 of how we needed to move to digital factories and also seeing these reports coming from Japan primarily of how they are using these machines to address their workforce issues and safety concerns and efficiency concerns, et cetera. So anyway, I'm going to close this out. Thank you so much for watching. And if you haven't liked the video, hit the thumbs up button. Like, what are you waiting for? The likes are free. And leave me a comment. What do you think? I mean, at this point, am I wrong? Like, am I wrong? That's all I want to know from you. Am I wrong? Thank you for watching. I appreciate you lovely people and I will see you in the next video if you are subscribed. Bye!